making excuses for our sin, unable to cover up our shame. Our story is Jonah's story. We were running from God, denying our calling, surrounded by a raging sea. Our story is a prodigal son story. We were wasting our blessings, lost in our failures, too afraid to return home. Our story is Peter's story. We were unbelieving, full of fear and doubt, our faith slowly sinking beneath the waves. But that is not the end of our story. We are all longing to be restored. We want to stop running. We want to be found. We want to believe, and we are crying out for a savior. So God stepped in, into a broken world, into human form, into our very lives. God stepped into our mess, into our sin, into our failure, our fear, our doubt. He stepped into death, and the door shut behind him. And then he arose, and left it all in the grave. He wiped clean our story, and started writing a new one. One without shame, without fear, without death. A story full of love and forgiveness. A story of redemption and restoration. It's our life story. It's his story. It's a resurrection story. Praise the Lord. Right where you are, would you raise your hands? Right where you are, would you lift him up and praise him right now? Stretch out in the spirit and recognize that there are his people all over who are praising him with you right now. Let's lift up his name together. Let's exalt him together this morning. Nothing will stop us from praising the Lord. Hallelujah. He is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd.
you everywhere I go.
Jesus is with you and he's alive. Yes, he is. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being there with me at all times. So at all times, my praise will be in my mouth for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more. Where you are, he is. Right in your midst, he's moving. I know you can feel him. We feel him here. You are here. Let him comfort you. Let him strengthen you. Let him uphold you with his mighty right hand. Sing it again. You are here. You are here. Moving in our midst. And Lord, I worship you. Yes, I worship you. You are here. You're working in this place. I worship you. Jesus, I worship you. We call you way maker, miracle word, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Yes, it is. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship. Yeah. 
not let this go so quickly if we could keep the keyboards playing right now. We are having a seismic effect in the spirit right now. The enemy thought that they would have a chance to build stuff up while we were away. But the spirit of God has said no. Right now where you are in your homes, let's make an earthquake in the spirit. Let's lift up the name of Jesus right where we are. In the name of Jesus, we come before you, oh God. We battle everything that is in our homes. We come against everything that is in our areas. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We will not stop. We will not be sent down. We will not be destroyed. In the name that is above every other name. In the name of Jesus. God I don't know what you thought you were going to be turning into this morning I know that there are some homes that have been struggling and some homes that have been facing things and this is your opportunity for freedom in the house this is the opportunity for the spirit to flow freely through your homes in the name of Jesus if you'll turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 17, we're going to be reading first off verses 1 through 5. Luke chapter 17, 1 through 5. Verse 1 says, Then he that is Jesus said unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. Verse 2 says, It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he cast into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Verse 3, Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. You see, what Jesus has done here, he has brought something to the apostles. And they're like, this is a hard thing. This is tough. I don't know how we're going to do this. In order for us to do this thing, Jesus, you are going to have to increase our faith faith so this morning if i could impress this thought on your hearts and minds and on every home that is tuned in the tough get going if you'll pray with me lord jesus i thank you for this time that we could come and be tuned in to you lord and we could be tuned in to the word that you are about to minister to us all god that every hindrance, Lord, and every distraction would be laid aside. Lord, I know that it can be easy when we are scattered for distractions to be in a multitude, Lord. But in the name of Jesus, let your spirit reign free in every house, O oh God. Let the spirit of distraction and the spirit of the enemy be cast out in the name of Jesus. Let our hearts and our minds be open and attentive to you, O oh God. Move your messenger completely out of the way and let your word be spoken pure and true, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody said in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise wherever you are. If you're standing, I assume that most of you are sitting, you may continue to sit. But if you're standing, you may sit. The disciples here, they have looked at something that Jesus has brought to them and they have said, this is a hard thing. This is a new thing to have to forgive my brother over and over and over again. This is a tough circumstance, Jesus. You're going to have to increase our faith. And the disciples act in the same way I do when God reveals something tough to me. When God brings something tough to me every single time, I'm like, Jesus, you know I can do this, but you're going to have to increase my faith. You're going to have to make me a little stronger. You're going to have to build me up a little bit. 
well, okay, God, but you're going to have to increase my faith if you want that. And Jesus responds on verse 6, and his response convicts me, as Jesus' response usually do. Verse 6, and the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto the sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. And Jesus responded to the question about faith. But he continues on. And it's when Jesus continues on that I find myself at conviction. At verse 7, he starts with a but. But which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him, by and by, when he has come from the field, go, sit down to eat? And will not rather you say unto him, Make ready wherewith that I may eat, and gird thyself and serve me, till I have eaten and drank, and afterwards thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he think that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. When things get tough, our flesh wants to hide and sulk in a corner. It says, you know what? I don't want to go out. I don't want to do the work that is required of me. It is a tough thing. I don't want to witness in this time. I don't want to show up on this time. I don't want to get what everybody's got. But Jesus says, when it's a tough thing, that there is still work to do. We cannot be confused about the expectancy of the church in a time of tough hours. We cannot be confused on what we must be doing. Just like on Friday night we live stream. Just like right now we live stream. When it is tough, we find a way to minister to the people. Jesus said it's tough, but my servants will do the work that I have asked them to do. There's a quote that says when the tough get going, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And God is saying right now, he's been reading the chats, he's been seeing the posts, he's felt the prayers that have been lifted up, and we've got some tough saints in the place. The God that honored your witness in Walmart three weeks ago is the same God that will honor it this week. The God that honored when you handed that old lady that last roll of toilet paper four weeks ago is going to honor it again this week. Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. No matter what, just like today, just like Friday night, we do the work. It's in these times that the body of Christ shines the brightest. It's in these times that the house of God is at its strongest. And it is in these times that our witnesses reign the truest. We cannot allow ourselves to be confused in the events that come up in the world. If you are confused, we must remember 1 Corinthians 14, says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. We cannot allow ourselves to be confused. For some reason, when stuff like this happens, we begin to wonder, is God really providing at this time? When I'm sent home from work, is God still providing? It's in these times when we're struggling. It's in these times when we're at need that God is there the most. It's there when he proves himself the most. You know what? I need a little bit of faith increase, God. And he says, just keep working. I'm here. Just keep doing it. I'm here. Just keep going. I'm here. When your job sends you home, God is still your provider. If the store runs out of bread, he is still your peace speaker. We serve an amazing, amazing God that is not letting us go. He has not turned his back on us. He has found an opportunity to grow the house of God. Anything that would say different is a lie from hell to distract us from the works of heaven. 
The enemy wants to distract us, but right now God is saying, I'm moving in every house that I can get to right now. And every one Sunday, I'm not moving in just one house, I'm moving in 60 houses. Oh, he is such a good God, and he has a work to do. Why don't you lift him up right now? Deuteronomy 31 and 6 says, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. Fear not, people. Fear not, children of God. Be strong and of a good courage. Be strong and of a good courage. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. We get and we worry about things and we worry about what our job is doing and, and what our, what's going to happen with our finances and what's, what's going to happen at our pantry at home. Is there going to be stock? Is there going to be food? What is happening? What is happening? And we forget that God needs us to be about his business so that he can be about our business. Matthew 6 and 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. But seek you first the kingdom of God. But seek you first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. All of what things? All of what things? Everything. If you were to read up in that chapter, everything that we have need of is promised to those who seek the kingdom first. We cannot allow ourselves to be confused because the God we serve is never confused. What things are you in need of today? Seek his kingdom first and watch them be supplied. He takes care of what we are in need of so that we can focus on the work. We must keep our hands to the plow. We must not let go. We have crops to take care of at this time. We all know a storm is a time of growth. A storm is a time of us growing and finding out what God has to say. But we cannot be confused in the storm because we cannot allow the storm to destroy the sun seed. We cannot allow a hailstorm to come and destroy the wonderful crop that has been planted. We must be aware of the time. We must be aware of what is going on at all times. If you are confused or if you are afraid, allow God to flow through you right now. I ask that everybody would just lift their hands right where they are for a second. Lord Jesus, I'm asking that you would touch every heart, every heart that is confused, every heart that is fearful. Right now, Lord, we rebuke the spirit of fear and we rebuke the spirit of confusion. We rebuke the spirit of doubt right now, oh God. And in the name of Jesus, we cast them out. Let there be peace and understanding, oh God. Let your word reign true in every heart and every mind. In Jesus' name. 2 Timothy 1, 7 through 8 says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Be thou, thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of the Lord, nor of me as prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. If you're tired, if you're worried, if you don't know what's going on, if you're confused and fearful, if you don't know what work to do, find yourself at the mercy seat today. Find yourself at the throne of grace this morning. I know that this is normally where we gather, but you can find yourself gathered at any time and anywhere. You will find that when you need God, he will meet you wherever you are willing to meet him. He will meet us wherever we are willing and not ashamed 
to meet him. If you are unashamed to meet him this morning, right where you are, he'll meet you right there. Matthew eleven twenty eight promises that God will give us rest. Verse 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There's a requirement to the rest. There's a requirement to the rest. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I don't know about you, but when I've, I've had times where I've sat at home all day long, it is hard to go to sleep at night. It is impossible for you to find rest in Jesus if you are not willing to do his work. We must be willing to do the work of the cross to have the benefits of a tired working day. Come unto me, all who are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Verse 29 says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. There's a lot of times when we first join that we find that we think that, you know what? God's not going to require much of us. We don't have a lot. We don't need to do a lot. God never promised that there would never be a burden. But he promised he would be there the whole time. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's easy and it's light. But there is one. There is one. First Peter 5, 6 through 11 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. You serve a God this morning that cares for you. He cares for you. It says cast all your cares upon him. Not some of them, not some of the ones that you feel are bigger and the, you know, the little ones we got to let them slide because God doesn't care about them. It says cast all your cares upon him. Verse 8 says be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour the enemy is thriving in confusion. The enemy wants to eat us alive in this confusion. He, he loves it that everybody's afraid. He loves it that everybody doesn't know what's going on. He loves it, he loves it, he loves it. But the body of Christ will not be devoured this time. We will not be devoured. We will not be cast down. We will not be destroyed. We will not be beaten apart. We will not be eaten. We will be sober. We will be vigilant. We are going to be there. Hallelujah. Seeking whom he may devour. If you don't let him devour you, he can't devour you. It's only who he has found that is allowed to be devoured. Verse 9 says, Whom resists steadfast in the faith, resist the enemy. Steadfast in the faith, in the trust, in the trust of God. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Oh, but we shouldn't have to go through this stuff. 
We shouldn't have to go through this stuff. We're the body of Christ. We're the saints. The Bible says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Honey, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to go through it just like them. That's how testimonies are built. That's how witnesses are built. We're going to have to go through it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but that's just how it works. But you know what? He it is that doth go before you. He it is that doth go with you. For the God of all grace, verse 10, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. You feel like you're being blown about this morning. You think that everything, do you feel that everything that's coming against you is rocking you just a little bit? Let God settle you this morning. Let God strengthen you this morning. Let him be who you need him to be this morning. God always wants to be there for his people. You need to understand that. God always has an answer. God always wants to be there. But he can only affect the things that we allow him to affect. He can only do the stuff that we say, you know what, you can take care of this God. Let him settle you this morning. Let him strengthen you this morning. Verse 11 says, To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. I don't know what God's plan is for times like this, but I know that we must act in the spirit as he leads us. I don't know who he's going to ask you to witness to this week, but we must ask in the spirit. We must pray. We must read. We must fast. We must grow. I don't know what your plans are, but I feel like that some of us, God is calling that he is asking you to grow your prayer closet into a prayer life. There are some people that God is after this week to make a personal conviction commitment to him that you never had before. Why don't you give him a hand clap of praise right now? If the musicians would start to play. You guys can come. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. Be strong and of a good courage. What did you need this morning? Were you tuned in, hoping to have your faith increased? I believe that faith has been increased. But I think the knowledge that there's work to do has been put out to the people. We cannot hide away in our homes. We have been blessed, blessed with such technology that we just need 10 people to minister to hundreds and to thousands. We've got churches all over the world doing the same exact thing. The ministry will be worked. The will of God will be worked. feel that Pastor Star Johnson has something to say. This is where testimonies are built. The tough get going. In your homes where you are right now, would you bow your head? Stand, kneel, whatever it is that you feel to do right now. You have an altar right where you are. Would you find that altar right now? Accept the word of the Lord this morning. Allow his presence strengthen you, settle you, establish you. This is a time 
where the tough get going. Where we find ways, make ways to witness, to minister. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this, your people. I pray you bless them right where they are. Not only, Lord, that you encourage and uplift them, removing fear and doubt and replacing it with love and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, but that you set them on fire in the Holy Ghost. Make them aflame with the Spirit. Use them, O oh Lord. Let them branch out in every aspect of their relationship with you right now. Let them build on their prayer life. Let them build, O oh Lord, on your word. And upon taking every opportunity available to witness, to reach out, to help others, to do whatever they can. This is the moment. The church is a city set on a hill. It cannot be hid. I pray that you, O oh Lord, let them shine their light today. Bless them in every way. Pray you be with them since we can't dismiss you from your own homes. We'll say, may God be with you. May he bless you. May he keep you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.